Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. Dominaria United is out, and we're all super excited to play some decks. We've got four new ones here for you today, so let's hop right into them and see who's playing and what they're playing. Up first is Jake on Braid's Arisen Nightmare. This is a mono black aristocrats deck that focuses on playing a lot of creatures with ETB abilities that he can then sacrifice to Braid's later to gain value. Jake will keep an opening hand of three swamps, Sots Will, Nether Trader, Fleshbag Marauder, and Morbid Opportunist. Up next is Sam on Tetsuo Imperial Champion. This Grixis deck focuses on equipping its commander so that it can get its attack trigger to either deal damage or get free instants of sorceries. Sam will keep an opening hand of Island, Mountain, Dragon Skull Summit, Nettle Cyst, Grafted War Gear, Charter Course, and Deadeye Quartermaster. Next is Shelby on Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief. This Simic deck focuses on absolutely abusing Ivy's ability to get free value, whether that be targeting his own creatures with insistent sorceries, casting auras, or even casting creatures with mutate. He'll keep an opening hand of Island, Forest, Beseju Who Endures, Kodama's Reach, Favor of the Overbeing, Slippery Boggle, and Augmenter Pugilist. And last but not least, we have Matt on Jota the Unifier. This is an absolutely mad five color legendary deck that uses Jota's ability to just cascade off of his legendary spells into more and then just absolutely floods the board to either win with combat damage or a combo. And Matt will keep an opening hand of Plains, Forbidden Orchard, Arid Mesa, Marsh Flats, Arcane Signet, Heroic Intervention, and Essica, God of the Tree. We're about to hop right into the gameplay, but before we do that, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for getting us to 10,000 subscribers. We couldn't have done it without you, and honestly, when we started this channel, I didn't think we'd get here this quickly. So, thank you so much. And keep an eye out on our future videos, because we're planning a special giveaway for you guys. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe while you're here as well, and while you're down there, don't forget to check out all of our links in the description. We've got links to deck lists, our podcast channel, our Patreon, where you can support us, and a link to our sponsor. Dragon Shield. If you're looking to pick up any Magic the Gathering sleeves, playmats, or other products, be sure to check them out in our description. But anyways guys, that is enough talk. Let's hop right into the gameplay. Matt wins the die roll, and he'll play and crack a Marsh Flats, finding a bayou to the battlefield, and he'll pass while searching. Jake plays a Swamp and passes. Sam plays a Mountain and passes. Shelby will play a Forest and cast a Slippery Boggle, and then he'll pass the turn to Matt. Matt will play a Plains as land for turn, then we'll tap for two and cast an Arcane Signet. The turn is then passed to Jake, who plays a Swamp as land for turn, then we'll tap for two and we'll cast Nether Trader. After this, he moves to combat and swings for one at Sam, and then passes to Sam. He'll play an Urza Saga on his turn and then just pass. Shelby will start his turn off with a basic island and then he'll tap for two to cast his commander, Ivy. He'll then move to combat and swing for one at Jake. The turn is then passed to Matt, and he'll play an Arid Mesa and immediately crack it, declaring he's going to search for a Savannah. He'll then shortcut a bit by casting a Shadow Spear and an Essica before searching, and then he'll pass the turn while he's searching. Jake will play another Swamp as land for turn. He'll then move to combat and swing for one at Shelby, who takes it, and then in post-combat main phase, Jake will cast Braid's Arisen Nightmare. He'll then move to his end step, Braid's will trigger, and he'll choose to sacrifice his Nether Trader. All of his opponents will decline the trigger, so they lose two life, and Jake draws three cards. With nine cards now in hand, Jake will have to discard Satsuil and a Morbid Opportunist, and then the turn will be Sam's. Sam plays an island as land for turn, and then he'll cast a Basilisk Caller. He then just passes the turn to Shelby, who plays an Exotic Orchard. He'll then tap for three to cast his Kodama's Reach, finding a forest to the battlefield tapped and an island to his hand. After this, Shelby will move to combat, swinging Ivy at Jake and his Boggle at Sam. The turn is then passed to Matt, who immediately taps out to cast Joda. He'll then play a Forbidden Orchard as land for turn, and then he'll cast a Mox Amber. And Joda's trigger is not a May, so he has to exile all the cards in his library, shuffle them, and put them back. And he'll pass the turn to Jake while he's doing that, who plays a Swamp as land for turn. He'll then cast a Plague Crafter, making everybody sacrifice or discard a card. He sacrifices it to itself, and when it dies, he'll pay the one black to get Nether Trader back. Sam will discard Grafted War Gear, Shelby sacrifices his Boggle, and Matt will sacrifice Essica. After this, he'll move to combat and swing for one at Shelby. Then he'll attempt to move to end step, but Sam holds priority on second main and will rapid hybridization braids. The turn is then passed to Sam, and as his first main phase begins, his Urza Saga reaches phase three. Before it sacrifices itself though, he will float it for a mana, and then he goes and searches up a soul ring. He'll then play Dragon Skull Summit as land for turn. He'll then drop a Talisman of Creativity, and then his commander, Tetsuo. And then after this, Sam will pass the turn. Shelby will start his turn off with a basic island, and then he'll cast his Glade Cover Scout. He'll then enchant his scout with favor of the overbeing, and Ivy will trigger and get a token copy attached to her as well. After this, Shelby moves to combat and will swing Ivy at Jake again, this time for 4 damage. 
After this, the turn will be passed to Matt, who immediately taps for four and casts Joyra. His exotic orchard was tapped when he cast this, so he gives Sam the 1-1 spirit. Matt will then begin his legendary cascade thanks to Joda, and the card he flips into is Jensen Carthalian. After this, Matt will move to combat, and he swings his big 8-8 commander at Shelby, who just takes the damage. The turn is then passed to Jake, who immediately moves to combat, and he'll swing his 3-3 at Sam and his 1-1 shadow at Matt. Matt just takes the damage, and Sam will trump with the 1-1. And then post-combat, Jake will tap for 3 mana and cast Toxic Deluge, paying 6 life. This will wipe the entire board, and you might be wondering how it kills Joda, because he's an 8-8. The Deluge kills the other two legendary creatures on the battlefield, shrinking him back down to a 6-6, so the Deluge will kill him. And while at the table they do die at the same time, technically Nether Trader seized the graveyard before Joda sees the graveyard, so its ability will trigger and Jake will pay the one. And of course, once Joda is put into the graveyard, Matt will move him to the command zone. Just a fun little interaction that lets Jake keep his 1-1. But after this, Jake has nothing left to do, so he'll pass the turn to Sam. And after thinking for a little while, Sam decides he wants to tap for three and he'll cast Nettle Cyst, which is attached to a 0-0 germ when it enters. He then casts Chart of Course, drawing two cards, and discarding a Fabricate. He then plays a Sulfur Falls as land for turn, then will tap for two to equip his Basilisk color to the germ token that was made when the Nettle Cyst entered. He'll then pass the turn to Shelby, who complains about drawing only lands, and I feel for you, man. He'll then tap for four to recast Ivy. And with Ivy still in the stack, Shelby will double major her to get a token copy that's non-legendary. The turn is then passed to Matt, and Matt will start his turn off by casting Najila, and the turn is passed to Jake. And Jake decides it's time to drop his Fleshbag Marauder to make everyone sacrifice a creature. And then he passes the turn to Sam. And Sam starts out by dashing out a Ragavan. He puts on the Nettle Cyst and the Basilisk Collar, then moves to combat. He swings for six at Matt, who takes it, so Sam will make a treasure. And Matt will exile a Wooded Foothills, which Sam cannot use. After this, Sam will move to instep, and Ragavan is bounced back to his hand, and then the turn is Shelby's. On Shelby's turn, he'll play the land he just drew again, and then he'll tap for six to recast Ivy. He'll then move to combat, swing for two at Sam, and then pass the turn to Matt. Matt plays Plaza of Heroes as land for turn, and then just passes the turn to Jake, who starts off with a swamp, then casts a Grim Haru Specs. After this, he will move to combat and swing for three at Sam. In second main, he casts Nim's Death Mantle, and then just passes the turn to Sam. Sam will start off with a Talisman of Indulgence, and then will cast a Deadeye Quartermaster. When it enters the battlefield, he searches his library for a Lightning Greaves and puts it to his hand. He'll then cast the Greaves, and then he'll cast Ragavan again, this time not dashing it, and then he'll equip it with the Greaves. After this, he'll move to combat and swings for two at Matt, who just takes it. Sam makes a treasure, and then Matt exiles Elish Norn. After this, the turn is passed to Shelby who plays a tap breeding pool that he just drew, and then he'll tap for three to cast his Augmenter. After this, he moves to combat and swings for four in the air at Sam, who just takes it. The turn is then passed to Matt, who will play a Badlands, and then taps out to recast Joda. Matt gives the 1-1 spirit to Sam, saying they're friends now. And Sam does not complain, neither would I. The turn is then passed to Jake, and he immediately moves to combat, swinging his Fleshbag Marauder at Sam, who blocks with his 1-1. They'll both die, and Jake will draw a card off Grim Horror Specs, and then return Nether Trader to the battlefield by paying a black. After this, he'll move to his second main phase, play a Swamp, and then recast Braids. After this, Jake moves to his instep and sacrifices his Nether Trader. Sam sacrifices his Pirate, and Shelby and Matt both just lose two life, and Jake will draw two cards. Jake will also draw a card to the Grim Horror Specs. He'll then move to clean up, discard a Tenacious Underdog, and then the turn is Sam's. Sam decides to start off by recasting his Commander. And then he'll cast Jessica's Will, choosing both modes. And Jake is the target since he has seven cards in hand. The three exiled cards are Oathkeeper, Shipwreck Marsh, and a Ponder. And then he'll make seven red mana. After it resolves, he'll start off by playing the Shipwreck Marsh. He'll then pay three red mana to cast Oathkeeper, then two to equip Nettle Cyst to his commander, and then two more to equip Basilisk Collar to his commander. And then finally, he equips the Lightning Greaves, making Tetsuo an 11-11 Death Touch Lifelink Shroud. Whew. Then with his last blue land untapped, Sam will cast Ponder, deciding to shuffle his deck and draw a card. Sam then moves to combat and swings for 11 at Shelby. There is an attack trigger, and Sam will point 3 damage at Braids to kill her. Shelby then channels Beseju to destroy Basilisk Collar to make sure Sam can't get any life off of this. Sam has no responses, so he goes and searches up a Xander's Lounge to the battlefield tapped. And yes, he can do this because Beseju says basic land type, not basic land. And Xander's Lounge has three basic land types. Continuing on, Braids is still killed by the three damage, and then Shelby just decides to take ten commander. And then after this interesting combat step, the turn is passed to Shelby, who plays yet another island, and then he'll cast a Stormcrow. After this, he moves to combat and swings for twelve at Sam, who just takes it all. And then the turn is passed to Matt, who casts a Chromatic Orrery, Joda Trigger, 
The legendary Cascade is Abrina. He then taps the Orrery for 5 colorless mana and casts Rada Dravik. Legendary Cascade trigger. And the flipped card is the Reaver Cleaver, which he casts. With one still floating from the Ori, Matt will then tap his Forbidden Orchard, giving Sam the 1 1, and then he equips Jota with Shadow Spear. He'll then move to combat, and he turns Jota sideways at Jake. Brina will trigger, putting two more counters on Jota, and then Matt draws a card, and Jake just takes the 11 Commander. The turn is then passed to Jake. Jake will play a Swamp, and then cast Merciless Executioner. He sacrifices it to itself and draws a card off Grim Horror Specs. Matt sacrifices his Brina, but he immediately gets it back as a 2 2 zombie. Jake also pays one to bring back Nether Trader. And then he'll do it again by casting Demon's Disciple. Everybody sacrifices a creature again, and Jake will draw another card to Grim Haru Specs. And Matt decides to just let Brina go for good this time. Jake will then swing one at Matt with Nether Trader, and then pass the turn to Sam, who starts off with an island as land for turn. Then, after seeing how terrifying Matt's board got last turn, decides to swing at him for 10 commander. Attack trigger, and he points 3 damage at Shelby's Ivy copy. And then Matt takes all 10 commander damage. The turn is then passed to Shelby, who just recasts Ivy, and then moves to combat, swinging 8 at Sam. The turn is then passed to Matt, who drops a Dehada, Binder of Wills. His legendary Cascade flips him into a Derevi. When the Derevi enters, he untaps his Ori, which, by the way, he still has one floating from it. After this, he downticks his new walker revealing Scrubland, Primordial's Glorious Rebirth, Kethys, and a Nature's Lore. That rebirth is absolutely terrifying. The two legendary cards are put into his hand, the rest into his graveyard, and he makes two treasure tokens. He'll then tap his Ori again, having six mana floating, and then he'll cast Kethys. The Jota Cascade flips Yoshimaru. With three mana still floating, Matt will then tap for four more to cast Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Jota Cascade shows us Peregrine Dynamo. He then returns Brina, Najila, Jensen, Joyra, and Essica back to the battlefield. And then with this, Matt sees his win. He can attack with Joda, Radadrabic, and his Peregrine engine this turn. Joda gives everything plus 11 plus 11 right now, so he points out that he can swing two things at Jake and one thing at Sam, and then pay five mana to Najila to get that extra combat and keyword soup, and then kill Shelby in the second combat. The rest of the table then asks each other if anybody has anything to get them out of this. Unfortunately, they don't, so they just decide to pack it up. What a wild turn from Matt. Well, guys, there you have it. Congrats to Matt for being our first Dominaria United video winner. What did you guys think, and who are you rooting for? Let us know down in the comments below. Hey, and while you're down there, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also check out our links. Also, don't forget, keep a lookout for our 10,000 subscriber giveaway. It should be coming up next week. But that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a smooth day.